Good morning. This is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, the last time we were here, I don't know, I'm told that you can see the, uh, the board, the hymn board behind me. And the last time we were here was Advent 4 in person in the church. So that was a while ago. We're back. Thank you to those who are here. There's 15 of us, including Harry. And there's a bunch of you out in uh, internet land. What? 27. 27 out in internet land so far. <laughs> Climbing all the time. And uh, I want to thank you all for being here. There's people watching from far away, Sudbury, maybe Wales, I don't know. Peterborough. Peterborough for sure. A shout out to uh, Len and Karina Logazar. Uh, two former, I was going to say two old members, but that's not nice. Two former members. Uh, hi, Lynn. Hi, Karina. And uh, I am about to, we've had the announcements, we've had some songs, and I'm going to ask everybody to follow me in the opening prayer, please. Most holy and gracious God, you who are the wind that brings new life and the breath that sustains us, blow upon us this day. Inspire the words we hear and speak and sing. Sweep away the dullness of our minds that we may know you more fully. Clear our hearts of those things that clutter them that we may love Jesus more deeply. Banish from our wills any weakness that prevents us from following him more faithfully. Be here with us, we pray, and move among us so that your name may be praised not only with our lips, but from our hearts and with our lives. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I uh, was also asked to mention that the August monthly mission is Child Evangelism Fellowship, so that you know what you're donating to for the monthly mission. And now I will ask my lovely wife of 47 years, Janice, to come up and lead us in the prayer of illumination and read the, nope, the scripture. No, not yet, not yet Ben. No, nope. I, I have it right here. Yeah, that's locked. Okay, so what are we doing now? I'm not all. You're going to take over? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Later for Janice. <laughs> Janice needs to hold her horses. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, and I've got some, I'm online there a little bit, My vo volume-wise, Maggie. How's that look? It's not bad? Okay. Morning. I've been a little antsy and excited about today <laughs> because there's so much technology going on. And if you were here last fall, you'll recall that we had a lot of problems. So we've been working pretty hard at uh, correcting those problems, but that doesn't mean we have done that entirely. Especially sound is tricky. So uh, we're hoping that the sound is half decent today, but we will tweak that as the, as the, uh, um, as the weeks go by. Uh, yeah, so hi everybody out there as well. Um, this is my second service. I went to Lachlan today. We had 10 people at Lachlan. It was crazy. <laughs> and you're, what What'd you say, Ben? 15 here? Yeah. 15 of us here today. So um, maybe someday when we, we add to it, we can use the camera and pan around and show everybody or something. <laughs> uh, so you're welcome to, everybody, welcome to join us now. It looks like hopefully we'll be open now for the duration forever. I don't know. If the numbers stay down, the the... Delta variant doesn't get us whatever. There's a, a few ifs, but it looks pretty good. I've, I, I will declare myself double vaccinated plus about a month, <laughs> which probably most of you, were, it's not politically correct to ask people about that, but. Uh, um, oh, there you go. <laughs> so he did that anyways. Um, okay, uh, so what we're doing is close to, hopefully close to the stream that I've been doing week by week. I've actually been doing it from where Melissa's, or Melissa, Maggie's sitting, and I had a green screen behind me with the office uh, picture on it. <laughs> it's kind of fun. Uh, so, and every week we, we feature a, uh, a little bit, bit of an instrumental ministry from Melissa, and we'll do that now with the, 
the Be Thou My Vision slide. Let's do it. You have to swing back and forth between this and that. Um, so th thanks, Melissa. Yeah, yeah we, we uh, I, I'm interested to hear how that came across in the uh, streamland. It's, it's going to be, if you come to the service, of course, we're, we're kind of betwixt and between involving people that are uh, out there and, um, and involving you folks that are in here. So it's uh, the new the new world. Oh, I thought I tuned this. Humidity. <laughs> we won't we won't take that as the. Huh? So the problem with live. If you record it, you can. Cut that out. You can, tune, you can tune it before you record. It's a lot more fun. It's the real deal. Okay, we're going to do uh, We're Believing. So this is a, a little bit of a, a Robin Mark.
apologize. Hey, so sorry about that. We apparently, the sound didn't go through for that song, but at least the slides were sort of there. <laughs> A little out of order, but yeah. <laughs> you need two people. And yeah, so just choo, 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 choo. So we're going to check, uh, the next time we have a hymn, we'll check the hymn first to make sure that the sound's working. Um, that's odd. But I had something like that. So that's our first glitch, uh, major glitch, hopefully. Uh, can you ask someone to respond? Yeah, can, can, can somebody type in and say... Um, if the audio's if, on now. If, if the audio is on now, if the audio was on during the song, it was off, just, we can't do anything about that now, but uh, we'll work towards fixing it. They, they right can't now. hear me right now. No. All right. Okay. Well, we're going to pause, and I'm going to see if I can fix it. <clears throat> it was working before, though. I just quit. Yeah. Hmm. They can't. So that's going, right? That's weird. Um, no, he's got no. his mic. It looks like it's working. This thing, if this thing is running, it should be should be working. Who, who said they couldn't hear? Peggy says I can hear him. I can hear Harry now. Can hear Harry. Okay, there we go. Sounds good. Okay. Okay, we're good. <laughs> oh, did this happen at the service? Really? Oh, that was at Monk's. There was no audio. At all? Wow. Well, do, do, do Monk's know? Yeah. No? Well, that's too bad. Okay. Um, we are going to spend some time praying, as clearly we need to be doing. <laughs> Ben, it mentioned we haven't got any information on the, the mission of the month for Child Evangelism Fellowship. Um, it's a, you know it's a, a children's ministry that's international, and and not strongly in Canada. When we when back in 2007 we took some kids to um, Mexico and uh, for a mission trip, and we worked with uh, Child Evangelism Fellowship there, and doing doing programming for kids and starting to build a, a facility for for them. So. Um, yeah, so I have a little a little knowledge about it, but we'll try to get more out for next week. Um, notes I've got, uh, I've got uh, Bob Nesbitt on the list today. That's Janice uh, Benoit's brother, and he is palliative, but he's still at home. And we'll just leave it at that. And of course, the family of Ken Noble, which uh, we just about, last week I said he, he was in hospice, but he died actually a week ago today on the Sunday. And we had a service for Ken. Ken was a huge part of this church. Uh, Ken and Joan, ever since I was here, they had come from Torrey Hill. And I mentioned this, but you couldn't hear me. <laughs> and the, serv the service was Zoomed uh, from Monk's Funeral Home, but apparently the sound didn't go through. I didn't know that till now. Um, so uh, the, when they closed the Torrey Hill Church, Ken and Joan came, started coming here back in the late 80s and uh, somehow brought the bell with them. So the bell that we have in the, in the steeple here is from uh, Torrey Hill United Church. So every time I hear the bell, I kind of think, oh, that's Ken. Ken brought that in. Um, who else? Uh, John Payne, as far as I know, is still in the hospital. He's, uh, he'll be there uh, waiting to get into long-term care. Uh, did anybody hear about Judy, Judy Davis, uh, how, she, how her surgery went? Okay. She has had surgery for pancreatic cancer. Um, and I mentioned last week, I think, that David Tate, Debbie Bain's brother, who was palliative, seems to have rallied. So he, had, he, had, uh, he was quite sick from complications from COVID. And uh, Pat Kennedy is, had uh, hip surgery, and he's got uh, platinum or something in his legs now. So, uh, okay. Any other additions? Oops. So we, I don't know, do we have that? I didn't put up the prayer thing, did I? 
Okay, so we'll just, no, I, I meant to, but I didn't. So uh, when I say, um, Lord, hear our prayer, you say, in your love and in your love answer. There you go. So disciplined. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, we, we thank you for this day. We thank you that uh, we've been able uh, and, uh, to safely gather once again uh, in, in physical form in a church. And uh, for this, we give you, give you thanks and praise. We thank you especially for the vaccinations that have been uh, wondrously made available to us, at least in our part of the world, and uh, how that's uh, uh, struck, struck such a blow against a COVID virus. So, Lord, for this, we give you thanks and praise. May we continue to be safe. May we continue to, to be wise. May you give grace to our leaders and help and strength for those uh, in, medical, in the medical ministry, in the medical care and medical care of all sorts. Lord, um, we thank you that uh, uh, this seems to be going the right way. Lord, we pray that that would continue. Um, Lord, uh, we pray this in your name. Lord, hear our prayer and in your love answer. And we lift to you those, those in need of your, your healing, and your help, your encouragement, uh, your love and your comfort. We think of uh, Kelsey Barnum who just uh, had a serious accident, uh, Bob Nesbitt, the family of Ken Noble, Michael Broadhagen Jr., Donna Robinson, John Payne, Judy Davis, David Tate, Pat Kennedy, and Peter Robinson. Lord, hear our prayer in your love answer. Lord, we pray ongoingly and uh, for, for those affected by the the revelations, I suppose, from the residential school debacle and horror uh, that we've, we've discovered has happened in our land. Lord, we pray for healing, for reconciliation, and for comfort. Um, Lord, we, we simply put that in your hands and, and seek your, your help and grace. We pray for Ann Iftudi and Dave and Ron Mark Jr., Sean Cook, Mark and Teresa Beach, Carol Parnell. Kathy Bins, Amy Blanchard, Allie and Courtney, John Romas, Caroline Hunter, Maureen Duquette, and Chris Rusk. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. We pray for John Bond, and Dave Kennedy, Ron and Olive Cooper, Yolande DeHaan, Don and Karen Tran, Katie Woodstra, Gladys Lamrock, Jessica Harrison, Chris London, Darko Knezovic, Steve Wigan, Sadie and Lindsay Lester, and others that we bring to you now in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, hear our prayer, and in your love, answer. For all these prayers we make in the precious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I think it's time that we call upon uh, Janice to come and lead us in the reading of the scripture. Good morning. Good morning, Janice. I'm going to be reading from Luke 10, verses 38 to 42 in the New International Version, and it's entitled, At the Home of Martha and Mary, but I forgot the prayer of illumination first. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded through Jesus our Lord. Amen. At the home of Martha and Mary. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, 
Don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. May the Lord bless the reading of his holy word. Amen. Thanks, Janice. Um, okay, so we're going to try singing again. I think we need to do a trial on it. <laughs> Jesus loves even. I'm going to play. <clears throat> what number is it? Is that 225. Let's see what family family is. 225. Okay, is there? Is it showing up? Does the sound showing up there? Okay, that's about all we can do. Would you like to stand? I am so glad that my Father in heaven tells of his love in the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Though I forget him and wander away, still Jesus loves me wherever I stray. Back to his dear loving arms would I flee When I remember that Jesus loves me I am so glad that Jesus loves me Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me I am so glad that Jesus loves me Jesus loves even me Oh, if there's only one song I can sing when in his beauty I see the great King, this shall my song in eternity be. Oh, what a wonder that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves even me. Have a seat. Well, did our sound work as far as we know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we'll have to see how that comes out. Um, I, know, I think, did we have Sharon Galt on the list? So sorry, but that, uh, Alan, Sharon, Sharon had just had... Uh, lung surgery uh -huh. and that apparently she it was commented on in the in the uh, early part of the stream chat line that uh, she's doing really well <laughs> recovering so thanks be to god for that. let's put i'm going to put her on here for next week and there's a message that dave kennedy is home oh Yay. wow dave kennedy is home now he's been in the hospital for months if not oh, like really? a year boy Okay. Let's pray. Our oh Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to listen to your word and to consider it and uh, that you've kept it and guarded it for us over these millennia and centuries. And uh, Lord, as we consider it today, we pray that you would uh, work your will in our hearts and in our lives. Lord, you would teach us and uh, you would call us and you would fill us with your Holy Spirit. So help us in this time as we think about uh, the word before us. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. Okay, we've got to get me shrunk down a bit more, I guess. You know how to do that? Or, or you can just slide me down a bit. So once you get me in place in the left side, and you, you double click it and it'll go... Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Good job, Meg. That's good. 
Well, that's, that's going to happen. I'm going to go in behind. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> uh, so th this is better right about there. Okay. Okay. So worries and distractions. I'll let you, let you just consider that. Some of you may remember this, but the, the, the wonderful thing about sermons and that sort is people just forget them once they walk out the door. So I assume you don't remember this at all. <laughs> uh, so the only thing, that, so the lady on the right there, she's a little distracted while she's driving. The only thing she's missing really is a, a cell phone that she was texting on while driving and eating a hamburger and drinking a drink. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the story of Mary and Martha, uh, the two sisters who are famous in the New Testament. And uh, a little background about them is, you know, th this passage is a shocking one. This is another one of those things where Jesus does the thing that is just so outrageous <laughs> that we're like scratching our heads and wonder, what the, what, why would he do that? Why would he say that? Uh, so a little background to this is, is that they were friends. So Mary and Martha were clearly friends of Jesus. And we, we hear them mentioned a few times in the Gospels. In the, probably the longest chunk is in John chapter 11. Uh, in the death of their brother. Lazarus was their brother. And in the story of Lazarus, Lazarus is quite sick and Jesus gets word. But he delays and lingers before he comes to see, see him. By which time, of course, he's dead. So when he gets there... Martha comes out and says to him, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. <laughs> she's so forthright with Jesus. You know, she's basically scolding him and saying, why didn't you get here sooner? You could have saved him. And uh, yet, at the same time, this, uh, one in the same time, she's a woman of great faith. So he says to her, uh, you know, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if they die, they will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And he says, do you believe this? Martha says, I believe you are the Christ. You're the Messiah. And whatever you ask from God, he will give it to you. So at one and the same time, she's got this intimacy with Jesus. I, I like the way she, she is with Jesus. Uh, it, it tells us something about how approachable he is, that you can be honest with him. Like He, he, he can handle our feelings even if they're, you know, they're uh, kind of contrary or angry, uh, off, off base. Uh, he doesn't just condemn us outright for it. We, we, we can have that kind of an intimate relationship with him and be honest and work it through. Uh, interestingly, in that passage in John 11, uh, the Mary, who is the, possibly the quieter, more feelings type of the two, it would suggest from the passage today, she, uh, she comes out after Martha and she says exactly the same words as, as Mary. If you re read the text, it's... Uh, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. <laughs> so she scolds him just the same way Martha does. And, uh, and then Jesus, of course, raises Lazarus from the dead, which is sort of the punchline. Uh, but, but that's the background here um, of uh, Mary and Martha. And Mary, um, so this is an artist's uh, a famous, fairly famous painting of Martha actually inviting Jesus into the home. Uh, and it says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. Now, this, this village is, I think it's Bethany, which is on the Mount of Olives, just like a couple of miles outside to the, to the east of Jerusalem. Possibly the place where Jesus stayed overnight during the, what we call the Passion Week, the week before his crucifixion, because he would go out every day and go up to the Mount of Olives and stay with friends. And these might have well have been his best friends, it's where, where Lazarus was raised from the dead. I think this is a significant line, though, not so, so as not to just gloss over. A woman named Martha opened her home to him. That's significant because uh, Jesus does not go where he, the home is not opened to him. Uh, and he, he will not go where he's not wanted. He, he will not go where he's not welcome. Uh, and so, which reminds me of this very famous passage, which is kind of depicted on this window. Uh, it's over there. You can't see it. Sorry, but uh, it's, it's Jesus knocking on the door. <laughs> and it's out of the book of Revelation, uh, chapter, th maybe 316. Uh, Jesus says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And whoever opens the door, I will come in and, and have fellowship with them and they with me. Now, so Jesus leaves it up to us. He knocks at the door, but it's up to us whether we open or not. And if we don't, he doesn't come in. He, he is that gentle. He is that meek. He is that, you know, he will not come where he's not welcome. Uh, there's a story in um, one of the stories of Jesus coming to Jerusalem, passing through around Samaria, 
and he wants to go into one of the villages of the, of the Samaritans. And this is, a lot of the stories in the Gospels are, are yay, Samaritans are pretty good folks. This one, they don't want him to come in. So John and James, two of the disciples, said, should we call down fire from heaven and just kind of destroy that city? What do you think, Lord? <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> don't do that. that that's, that's not how I work. Um, but, but he did not go where he was not wanted. And he will not go where he's not wanted. So it's, it's, it's between you and, and him uh, to continually have the door open for him to affect your life and speak to your heart and speak to your life. Um, so Mar Martha, she opened her home to him. And so then it says, she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. Let's take a look at that. So he, here's a, a, a depiction of that, which is quite, I, it's pretty good. Um, there's Mary hanging on every word that Jesus has to say, uh, and Martha working diligently away in the background. Uh, and she's not really happy about this because <laughs> uh, Mary's not helping. And this is a fairly common situation, especially I, I, I've noticed, I've, I've talked with a lot of people who live in cottage country and who have people come up to visit. <laughs> and very often, they, there's a little bit of annoyance because, you know, there'll be working diligently to put on this great meal or whatever and, and uh, you know, everybody else is off playing or swimming or, you know, be, like, be a bit of fuming. I mean, it's just natural. Um, uh, it says, Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. Now, so this expression, she sat at, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said, that's a kind of uh, Middle Eastern idea, to, to sit at the feet of someone meant to be there, to, to see yourself as their pupil. They are your authority. They are your teacher, your rabbi. Uh, later on, it tells Paul, it's, it says of Paul the Apostle that he sat at the feet of Gamaliel. And, that, you know, they probably actually literally sat at their feet, but... Uh, but it really was this means to convey that that was their teacher, their professor. Their, they learned from them. They were followers. Uh, so Martha was distracted by all the preparations that they had to be made. So she came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. You can possibly, you know, boy, that this is timeless. <laughs> that feeling and that, uh, you know, that outrage. Uh, and many of us, if not all of us, have experienced this to some degree or, or another. And but the, the funny thing is that she has the gall to tell Jesus what to do. Right? <laughs> She's going to tell Jesus, this is what you should be doing. Uh, tell her to help me. And, and yet, that's how comfortable she was with him again. That's how, uh, you know, and it's kind of like those prayers of lament. You go back to the Psalms and say, Lord, why don't you help me? What's going on? And that's Okay. That, that, that is honesty in prayer um, until we get it sorted out. It's the way we wrestle with, with our God. Uh, so this is Martha. She was not, not, not happy. So Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. And we gotta, this goes against the grain, because <laughs> we think Mary's slacking, and she should be helping. Uh, so well, what's going on here? Jesus is using this as a teaching moment, clearly. I have to turn my page, so I'll get back on that. Well, let, let's think a little bit about kind of the, the, uh, the part that worries have to play in our lives, because it's huge. I mean, we are worriers. Now, we're, the worrying that we do, the anxiety that we have, it often can be condensed to what if. Well, what if? There's a lot of what if. What if, what if, what if this doesn't? Boy, I can tell you, I wrestle with this. I'm, I'm not. What this is about is a Christian discipline of dealing with anxiety. And it's, it's there are, Lots of instances of this kind of teaching and uh, uh, presentation in the New Testament. Uh, and this is one of them. Um, for instance, Jesus, Jesus talks about this quite a bit in the Sermon on the Mount. He says, you know, he says consider the lilies of the field. Consider the birds of the air. They, they're not worried about anything. And, and your father feeds them. Are you not of much more value than they? <laughs> so, I mean, that's a, another teaching on, on this 
uh, problem, this situation we have where we worry all the time. Uh, so a little bit of psych the psychology of it, perhaps. Uh, so let, let's say this is the, the, the sphere of concern that we have, all the things that we care about, uh, personal things, national things, international things, COVID, uh, poverty, um, climate change, whatever. So it, it, it's huge. Then, you know, we, we, <laughs> we, we may have an influence. Now, that in this is not to scale, by the way. In, in truth, that in our influence is way, way, way teenier than that. Just a teen. We have a little teeny influence. It means we, we might be able to say something or nudge somebody in a certain direction or, or perhaps persuade somebody of something, maybe. Or, or maybe, you know, you know, have some say in something. But beyond that, then there's control. So, so that's even smaller than our influence is, you know, how much control do we actually have over any of the things that concern us? And when you, it comes right down to it, we don't really have much control over anything but ourselves. I mean, you can, you, we can nag each other. <laughs> we can nudge each other. We can persuade each other. But we can't make each other do stuff uh, in, a, in a normal situation. So, and even self-control is limited, I find. So, you know, that, that, those are tiny little circles within the area of concern. So let's see if my, for those in the church, the pointer works. So from here, the area of control to the area, outside area of concern, this is all the, the place that there's room for us to worry. And so we do. So we do. And we struggle with this. Uh, here's a survey of 2,000 Britons. Apparently that's what people of the British Isles often call themselves, I guess, from 2015. The research revealed we spend on average one hour and 50 minutes a day fretting, amounting to 12 hours and 53 minutes a week or for, uh, per week, or four years and 11 months across the average adult lifetime of 64 years. Hoy, that's By the way, that's exactly my age. I don't mind telling you. <laughs> I guess I've worried for four years and 11 months <laughs> if I'm the typical person. <laughs> probably. It's probably something like that. Wow. Scary. Uh, and 85% of things we worry about never happen. That's according to research conducted by Robert Leahy, PhD. Isn't it so? I mean, you stop and think of all the stuff you fret and worry about, uh, the, the horrible things that are going to come down the pipes. Some of them happen. Most of them don't. And, but how, how often do we ever look back and say, oh yeah, you know, all that stuff I was worried about, but that didn't happen. <laughs> I was terribly afraid of whatever. And no, come to think of it, everything was fine. Well, things don't happen. So, so we could do a flip chart and have you list all the things that, that you worry about. But I, I decided to save time and do my own flip chart. So here, here's a few things that just off the top of my head, you know, money, big thing that people worry about. Pretty much all of us in some way, shape or form worry about money. Will we have enough? Are we getting the best deal? You know, I don't know if that bothers you, but it does me. <laughs> Should we get gas today? You know, because <laughs> the price is about to go up and we gotta get into the gas station. Uh, can we afford a treat? So from the sublime to the ridiculous, can I get an ice cream cone? Because, um, you know, that's five bucks an hour or something. Um, uh, and, and it's not just people, it's not just the people that don't have much money that are worried about money. It's people that have money they worry about money, whether they can hold on to it, you know? whether, the, you know, whether it'll carry them through retirement, whether it will get taxed away, uh, whether, whether the, the stock market's going to drop, all, all, the, all kinds of stuff. People, people just worry. Health. Oh. Where to start? You know, our health, our family's health. You know, about, is my heart going to hold out? Will I get cancer? Yeah, COVID. <laughs> the COVID thing is a huge cause of anxiety throughout the world for the last almost two years. We're coming on to now. Uh, safety. Uh, we, we worry a lot about whether we're going to be safe. The, the the phobias basically have to do with our with whether we feel safe or not. So if you have acrophobia, I have a little bit, it turns out. I, I didn't used to. I grew a fear lobe for that. I used to climb everything and anything. And I, I could be up on the top of a cliff and look out. Now I'm, I'm on a, on a, up on a cliff somewhere, and I've got people with me like I have done on canoe trips. And they're getting near the edge. I'm, I'm back like 10 or 15 feet. Like, <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to fall over. But it hasn't happened yet. Once again, 85%. Basically. Um, for instance, those of you that are in the church, we didn't get the banner up on this side because the nail fell out when we went to put it up where you, where you hang the banner. 
So I thought, well, I'll, I'll just climb the ladder. And, and then I, I took a look at it. I brought a little ladder and I said, yeah, not happening. <laughs> a little bit of acrophobia. Agrophobia, fear of open places or a whole lot of people. People won't go out amongst into the world. They stay in their own house. And then the other one, the three, the three A-phobias, arachnophobia. <laughs> Somebody reminded me, that, oh, Lori Brown was at, uh, actually at uh, Lachlan today, and she said, arachnophobia. Yeah, fear of spiders. How many spiders actually will kill us in these parts? Yeah, none. Or, yeah. Apparently we eat spiders all the time when we're sleeping. We don't know it, but I shouldn't tell you that. <laughs> That's not helping. I'm not helping. Uh, relationships cause us a lot of concern and you know how we get along with our kids our grandkids our in-laws our parents uh, our friends you know and th those relationships dip and dive and they cause us worry what people will think of us I struggle with that quite a bit <laughs> and you know I have to turn it over to the Lord but uh, some people don't care you know they I don't care what anybody thinks of me I'll do what I want say what I want other people are really cautious and careful because they like to be liked, right? And so we struggle with that. Lost articles, whether it's pens or keys or glasses or wallets or purses, uh, we're lots of worry. And, and bigger stuff like poverty and injustice, and violence and the environment, you know, climate change, uh, pandemics. It, it, the, the pandemic may be coming under control in Canada, we, we think and hope, but in so many parts of the world, they don't have access yet to, um, to these vaccines. It's a concern. Um, and that can cause us worry. Raising kids, enough exercise. I'm not getting enough exercise, <laughs> I could tell you. Uh, how many of us have put on a few pounds during COVID? I won't ask you to answer that. And technology, yeah. So sometimes I just wanna take these computers and just break them over something. <laughs> And chuck that phone in the lake and, you know, can cause us a lot of work. So those are just some of the things that we worry about. And to all this, really, Jesus is saying this. One thing is really necessary. So, so it's not about that those things don't matter. We shouldn't do what we can about the things that concern us. He's not saying that. But he's calling us to find our priority in life. And, that, and he's calling us... To, to him being our priority. It's outrageous, really. But that's what he's doing. Mary is sitting at his feet, and she, he says, she's chosen the better, the better way here. It says, back to the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says the same thing. He says, seek first, it's a priority thing, the kingdom of God and his rightness or righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So what Scripture is telling us, what Christ is telling us, what the Spirit of God is teaching me and, and teaching us as the years go by, I hope, <laughs> is that it, when, when we're full of worry, usually we're not very full of faith. Like we're, we're, we've moved away from trusting the Lord with the things that bug us. So I, the scriptures again and again say things like, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. And then the peace of God will, will, that passes understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Another place, you know, Peter quotes this from the Old Testament. Cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Do we believe that? Do we trust him? So Jesus is calling us to, to trust him. And so when we don't, our world is upside down. <laughs> when we don't, you know, when our priorities are, we, we're not, we're not, and this is the reason we get swallowed up by worry is because we're not, we're not in the right place in the universe that God created us to be, i.e. In, in close and intimate relationship with him where we know he's in charge and he's sovereign and he's dealing with these things that are, are, are concerning us. Um, so when we do that, things get right. <laughs> so that's a little bit of worry. I got a little bit about distraction. Look, a distraction! <laughs> uh, so, oh, where'd I go? I don't know. I think, did you touch anything? No, I'll pop it up. It might be, see if it goes. Okay, it got lost. Oh, well. Yeah. So I'm, maybe we'll just call it a day right there. I was going to talk about distractions. I had a picture of a, a preacher at the front, uh, 
looking at the congregation, and the congregation's all got their cell phones out looking up. <laughs> yeah, as I mentioned, I may have said, used this uh, particular message before, and when I did it, somebody in the congregation said, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm looking up the scripture. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And we're distracted by uh, everything under the sun, right? Uh, and and the possibility of distractions is increasing exponentially as the years go by. I mean, we're just, and not that distractions are uh, necessarily a bad thing, but we're, you know, if we're called to one thing and, and other things are calling to us to give them our attention all the time, uh, we have to, the, the struggle is to be in control of yourself. So that just because something feels good or looks good or is calling to you, is it the right thing for you right now? And so often we're so easily distracted by everything under the sun. I am. And a lot of people in my family have what they call ADD, attention deficit disorder. Well, I might be one of them. <laughs> but one of the pictures I was going to throw up was, uh, was of uh, the, the dog from Up. And in this movie Up, um, this dog can talk. And he seems quite human almost until he sees a squirrel. <laughs> and he goes, squirrel! squirrel. And phew, he's gone. <laughs> So, <clears throat> so, so that, that, that's kind of what we're like. It's so easily, you know, things around us with sports and, and movies and books and uh, texting and uh, the latest show to binge, you know, the books. And to some degree, we do need distraction. So it's, it's, it's finding the balance because these things call us, call away from the central thing. So and I, I guess then I finished it with one thing is necessary again, and that is, you know, that Jesus be, that our faith in Christ be front and center, and everything else be, uh, uh, be under that, be, be second to that. Um, <clears throat> and I, I had a picture, too, of a kind of semi-empty church, kind of like this church right now, <laughs> but, but this church is, is emptier than it would be because of COVID. But in North America, still today, I mean, I've heard that, you know, there's a I don't know if this is true. A united church closes once a week in Canada. Um, and across North America, of course, there's a huge drift away from, from the Christian faith and from church. And there are many reasons for that, many reasons. Um, some of them are cultural, and some of them are just the failing of the church to be aware of how to do mission well. But also, what, what challenges us is the zillions of distractions that are now in place. But back in the day when I was a kid, you know, Sunday was sacrosanct. You know, su Sunday was basically for church and, and Sabbath and rest. Now everything's open and hockey happens and, you know, skating happens and, and uh, dancing happens and everything happens on a Sunday. Uh, I just saw, remember, remember Eric Little, the story of Eric Little, the, uh, the uh, Scottish athlete from the 1924 Olympic Games? The Chariots of Fire was called, Chariots of Fire? Doesn't take much before I squiggle out of the frame. Uh, Chariots of Fire. So he was a strong Christian, and he was he was a gold medalist in the 1924 Olympic Games. Uh, but he he refused to um, to to enter the trials for the hundred meters uh, because they were holding them on Sunday. <laughs> it was huge news in Britain back in 1924, uh, and just because of his faith, nobody would ever think that anymore. But. There, there's just so much that, that pulls people away. People have to seriously think, you know, how am I going to use my time? How am I going to, what am I going to allow to distract me? Uh, and how do I continue to, to keep my life and my heart focused on Jesus? Mary, uh, uh, Jesus says, Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that uh, you call us to yourself, to know you, to love you, to learn of you, to sit at your feet. Lord, so many things pull us from that, worries and distractions in our world and in our lives. We need your grace to help us. Lord, we need your spirit to guide us. We need one another to, uh, um, to help us. We thank you for all the gifts that you give to, to each of us that we might be encouraged to, to continue on with you. We thank you for your great patience 
and mercy and forgiveness and love that we have through the cross. Lord, that, uh, but that you continue to seek that we might have our, our lives sorted out in you first. Because you are worthy of being first. You who loved us, gave up your life for us, Lord, and, uh, and have served us all our days. All that we have in our is yours. Lord Jesus, teach us to, to put our focus and our attention on you. And we ask it in your name, Jesus Christ our Lord. You who taught us in prayer to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Okay, we're going to sing. And we're going to sing, hopefully, uh, Take My Life and Let It Be, Consecrated Lord to Thee. So run the next slide, and she's going to play the whole verse and get the background. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us, both now and always. Amen. Oh, now in peace, never be afraid. God will go with you each hour of every day. Now in faith, steadfast, strong, and true, the oh God will guide you in all you do. Go now in love and show you believe. Reach out to others so all the world can see. God will be there. Watching from above 